Hi everyone, welcome to part one of the tutorial on Only Elliot by Tommy Emanuel. As always, let's first roll the Patreon credit roll and today I can welcome Joe and Rod among the new top tier supporters. If you want to support me and the channel and gain a few extras in the process, then have a look on what's on offer on Patreon through the link in the description. For single contributions instead of monthly payments, there is a link to the PayPal tip jar as well. Only Elliot is a lovely upbeat song and for a change not an extremely difficult one. The song uses a lot of standard chord voicings and adding the melody on top of those chords usually doesn't require you to alter these known chord shapes at all. There are a few chords with the thumb over the side of the neck, but they can all be replaced with a more traditional alternative. Tommy uses the thumb pick for this song, but you never have to play an alternating bass line. Of all the songs I've done so far, this one seems to suffer the least negative impact if you decide to drop the thumb pick completely. The most difficult aspect of the song will be adding in the percussive accents on the second and the fourth beat throughout the song. And at this point my tabbing software is somewhat limited. Throughout the song I have added an X wherever you have to produce a percussive click, but the way you have to produce this click will always be explained in the video. This is because these percussive accents aren't always performed on the strings on which they have been notated in the tablature. You'll see why once you get to these sections. Now, that is all you need to know to get started. Okay, so on to the tune. Now, Tommy uses a guitar in standard tuning and the only extra I'm going to be using is a thumb pick. Tommy does use a capo at the second fret, but as I did with uh, previous tutorials, whenever I uh, try to explain stuff, it's easier to follow along with the tab without the capo, especially in the chorus. There are a few bits where you really have to jump around the neck quite a lot and quite quickly. So that is going to be a lot easier explaining this without the capo, without always having to count up two extra frets. Uh, and then as soon as you get it all into your fingers, it shouldn't be a big problem to slap on a capo at the second fret and then just move everything up two frets. So, guitar in standard tuning, no capo for the tutorial and a thumb pick. Let's get to work. Let's start with the intro first and it's a really short one this time, only two bars. This is what it sounds like a little bit below concert speed. <laughs> That's it. Now there is one technique already popping up in this uh, first two bars that we will have to use throughout the rest of the song as well. But first let's have a look at the fingerings. We're starting with an open D string. That open D string will be played throughout the full first bar. And we're moving from the ring finger on the ninth fret, middle finger on the eighth fret, to a little bar on the seventh fret, moving down that bar to the fifth fret, and this is all on that open D string. The last chord over that D string is a G triad, or a little G third, I'm sorry. Uh, middle finger on the fourth fret of the G string, index finger third fret on the B string. So all back to back over that open D string. The first D note is an upbeat, so that one actually starts one eighth note in front of the first beat. So you get three, four, one, two, three, four. And then we're moving to a C chord, but we're only playing a part of it. Index finger, third fret on the low A string. Open G string, pinky, fifth fret on the B string. Moving to A. G chord, again, just a part of it. Second fret on the A string, open G string still, and third fret with the ring finger on the B string. Moving to an E minor chord. All you're needing is basically an open E string, an open G string, and an open B string. Tommy often just frets that E minor chord, nonetheless, just for a little bit of safety, should you accidentally hit another string, then that string will still sound out right. To E minor, then to a D over F sharp chord, Tommy uses the thumb over the side of the neck on the second fret. Open D string, 
index finger second fret, but it's perfectly doable to play this without the thumb over the side of the neck as well and play it for instance with the index finger and the middle finger. So if you come down from that E minor chord, you just swap out to the D over F sharp or if you use the thumb like this. And then the very last chord is a G chord, third fret on the low E string with the ring finger and two open strings, the D string and the G string. Let's play that all the way from the first bar into the second bar. Three, four. Those were the basic chord fingerings. Now, you probably notice there is still something missing. Tommy uses a muting technique in between each chord. The first bar, he keeps pumping that open D string while really softly brushing across the strings with the back of the nails, giving you a soft percussive uh, effect. It's not really meant to, to stand out uh, significantly, so it's not clicking or really pushing the strings into the fretboard or anything. It's basically just this. That's all he does. And the difficult part is getting that bass string to ring out while performing that percussive strum, that muted strum with the back of the nails. So Tommy keeps the D string going and he manages to get that percussive sound out while he's still playing the D string with the thumb. This is going to take a bit of work. It's, it's, it's something I played for the very first time when transcribing this song. So it's an unusual technique, but it's something that will click quite quickly. So it's, it's, it feels more than a trick than an actual technique. So thumb keeps going and you brush with the back of the nails against those muted strings, lifting up the, the chord fingering or, or the fretting hand uh, releases all pressure, but you still keep the fingers on the strings so you get a muted sound. That's the effect you should get. If you watch Tommy play this, you'll actually see that his hand sort of jumps up a bit and makes a downward movement. It's, it's just going, uh, it's going to be a bit of a search to see what way uh, works for you. But this is the basic technique, pumping that D bass string while getting those muted strings on top. One, two, three, four. That's the basic idea. Now let's add that in with the rest of the chords with the fingering we already saw. Three, four. And then as soon as you move to that C chord, then that uh, bass note in between will vanish. In the intro at least, there will be a variation the second time around. And Tommy basically mutes in between each chord, not actually playing a percussive click. The muted sound or the muting of the strings is more of a side effect of actually cutting those strings short. Just putting back the fingers is all the effect you need. Just in between each chord, as you uh, prepare your picking hand for the next chord, when you put down those fingers, that's basically all the noise Tommy is making. He's not putting in an extra effort to really get something out of the guitar. It's just basically this sound. That's all he's making. Three, four. That's the full intro. Let me play that really slowly, those two bars back to back. Three, four. Important, that last chord lands in front of the first beat, but it does serve or function as the first chord of the verse as well. That was the intro. Now make sure you get this down really well because this one will pop up after each chorus as well. So you will be playing this section quite a few times throughout the song. Let's have a look at the verse now. I'm going to play through it as I did with the intro a little bit below concert speed and then we'll take a good look at this. Here we go. Three, four. <laughs> As 
straight into the first chorus. Now, there's a lot going on in this, um, but as you will see, a lot of this song is repetition as well. So let's have a first good look at those first few bars. So we're starting out with that G chord in front of the beat. Three, four, one, and you're plucking that bass string one more time. Three, four, one, hammering on with the middle finger to the second fret. Three, four, one, two. And then that uh, second beat, that's one of the few times that you will have to perform or you will have to produce a percussive effect, a percussive click, while still playing uh, actual chord tones at the same time. So you're flicking down, or at least Tommy is flicking down the middle finger across the open G and B string, producing a soft percussive sound while still getting those chord tones out there. Three, four. That's all that is happening. So Tommy flicks down the middle finger across two or three strings. The main thing to watch out for is to avoid the top E string. But apart from that, it doesn't really matter if you play the D string, sorry, the B string, the G string, and if you include the D string or not. That isn't really uh, that much of an issue. But as you flick down the middle finger across those strings, then you have to Pluck right away again, upward with the middle finger while putting down the pinky on the third fret, giving you a D note. Three, four. That's one of the very few times you will actually have to produce one of those backbeat clicks on the second or the fourth beat while still playing chord tones. For the rest of the, the verse, it's actually going to be just muting on beats two and four without actually playing a chord as well. One more time, really slowly. Three, four. So just softly down with the nail and picking right back up again, again using the middle finger. On to the next chord. Three, four. Moving to a C major seventh chord. We're not using the index finger just playing third fret on the A string. I am putting down the middle finger on the second fret. Can't remember uh, by heart if Tommy does this as well. But again, this is safety. If I accidentally hit uh, the wrong string, it's still going to sound fine. Then open G string, open B string, open E string. You're not playing all of those strings, but this is the full C major seventh chord. And then we're going to put down the pinky on the third fret on the high E string. Picking that again with the middle finger as the next melody note. Those two chords back to back. Three, four. And now it's just straight down, putting down that hand right away, flat across the strings and just softly strumming across those muted strings. Again, producing a, a percussive effect on the back beat, on the fourth beat. Back to back. Three, four. Just that strum going down, moving to an F sharp minor seventh chord, bar across the second fret with the index finger and only using the pinky on the fifth fret. You are using that percussive strum, that muted strum, to switch to the next chord. Then this one is again landing in front of the first beat. It sounds like this, three, four. So the next bar isn't difficult at all. You're starting out with that F sharp minor seventh chord, moving down the pinky, one string again on the fifth fret for the next melody note. And then we're moving up that whole chord, two frets to a G sharp minor seventh chord. Back to back, three, four. So what is happening is you're plucking that chord in front of the beat, Repick the bass note, move the pinky to the B string, three strings, muted strum, and while doing that muted strum, you're moving up the chord two frets. Bass note, now you will need the ring finger as well for that sixth fret. Uh, you could put down that ring finger down as well uh, through the F sharp minor seventh chord, then moving up to the G sharp minor seventh chord, you actually need the ring finger. Again, producing a 
a percussive click and moving back to open position to an E minor 7th chord. Just that one bar, back to back, 3, 4, and again moving in front of the beat, open E string, open B string. 3rd fret on the high E string with the pinky, again I'm uh, fretting the full chord just as a matter of safety. Playing style is the exact same thing, 3, 4, so again accents on 2 and 4. This is one of the few times where Tommy actually leaves the chord down. I don't think he means to produce chord tones, but every once in a while a few of them just pop up when he does that uh, percussive strum. What he's doing is he's, you're starting on that pinky uh, third fret for the melody note, three, four, moving the pinky to the third fret on the B string, three, four, and again a strum, just while keeping down that chord, sometimes Tommy likes to mute it as well. 3, 4, open E string as the melody note and then while leaving down the pinky on the 3rd fret going for a C at the ninth chord, ring finger 3rd fret on the A string, middle finger 2nd fret on the D string, pinky remains where it is 3rd fret on the B string, 3, 4, and again just a strum on the 4th beat Again, meant as a percussive effect and sometimes some chord tones pop through. Three, four. Middle finger pops down from the second fret on the D string to the second fret on the G string. And then the choice is yours. Tommy then uses the thumb over the side of the neck to play an F sharp chord uh, tone. You could as well use the index finger, so there is no need for the thumb over the side of the neck, you can just swap this out. This is how that part sounds, 3, 4, so again, same thing, backbeats on 2 and 4, Tommy does use the thumb over the side of the neck, this is what it sounds like, if you don't use the thumb over the side of the neck, it's the exact same thing, 3, 4, the exact same thing, so thumb or index finger doesn't really matter. Then pulling off to an open string, three, four, bass note, pull off, putting the middle finger right back down again and again with the back of the nails, trying to produce the percussive click and the chord tone at the same time, three, four. Again, as in the first bar, Tommy uses the middle finger to strum down for the percussive effect and then uses the middle finger right back to play that open B string. Three, four. And then Tommy just he leaves down the middle finger on the G string, just that second fret, adds in the third fret on the low E string for a G chord and then again strums down one more time with the middle finger producing some light chord tones. That last bar, three, four, and then that last bass note on that bar is actually the first bass note of the next four bars, so it's again the chord, uh, the, the bass note is placed in front of the first beat, so this is actually leading into the next four bars. That's a lot for those four bars, but as you can see, the chord fingerings are quite easy. Most of the time, it's just a matter of getting that second and fourth percussive backbeat in there as the effect, and everything else in the way you are playing this is more or less straightforward. Let me play those first four bars slowly, and then we'll take a look at the next four bars. Three, four. <laughs> that last bass note is leading into the next four bars, which are mainly repetition. Let's have a look. Three, four. So the 
the only difference is basically the very last bar. So the first bar is the exact same thing, except for maybe the start of that bar. The very first time we placed a full chord in front of the beat, three, four, and then picked the low bass note again. When Tommy enters the second part of the verse, he actually only plays the bass note in front of the first beat and then plucks the D string and the G string. So this is what it sounds like, three, four, and it actually makes that hammer-on a little bit easier because you don't have to play the chord, the bass note, and then the hammer-on. Now it's bass note, chord, hammer-on, and you're straight into the next four bars of the verse. One more time, a bit slower. Three, four. The only difference, so ending up on that A chord, on that A note, sorry, with the thumb over the side of the neck or with the index finger, playing this melody. So, pulling off from the second fret to the open string, fourth fret on the D string, and back to the open string, and adding in the low G bass note. Three, four. No percussive click in this bar, which makes it a little bit easier. Three, four. And then the first time, Tommy plays that little uh, bass run up, just doing third fret on the low E string, open A string, and then to prepare yourself for the next part, use the index finger on the second fret, and the index finger just shifts up to the third fret, allowing us to quickly shift to the first chord of the chorus. That was the full verse. Like I said, there's a lot going on in terms of muting, but everything else in the left hand is actually easier than we are uh, used uh, to from Tommy's songs. So let me play the full verse one more time, really slowly, then we'll have a look at the chorus. Here we go, one. Or maybe just let me add the intro as well to give you a full view on the whole song. Here we go, one, two, three, four. chorus. Now as always with these songs, with those percussive effects uh, hidden in there, it always sounds a little bit disconnected. If you play it slowly, once you start picking up the speed, then all of those parts will sort of start blending together and will give the effect you hear on the recording, because this is what Tommy is playing. And that is where we conclude part one. Take some time to get the intro and the verse into your fingers and I'll be back next week with the explanation on the chorus, the bridge and the ending. See you there.